It done got smaller because her hips got bigger. <laughs> I teased her. She pushed me on my arm and said she wasn't going to make me no more pies. I keep talking like that. It wasn't the first time she joked about it, but still made us both laugh. I tell her I play the fiddle at night and build furniture and caskets during the day. She asked me if I was going to stay working for Master John. I didn't want to work for nobody except myself if I can help it. She laughed. Well, I hope you know they ain't going to let no black man be his own boss. I didn't say nothing about that because I didn't want it to be true. But I know she's been right. I can make most anything Master John can make, and by the time I'm all the way a man, I'm going to be just as good. I'm doing what you said, Mama. I'm learning all I can. I'll be in the room when you talking to those men sometimes about what he wants. We go pick up wood and materials, and I'm in the corner. Sometimes I hear them making that business talk, making deals and negotiating. It ain't that hard, Mama. But will they listen to you, negotiate with you? You ain't a white man. White men is the only ones white men will listen to. Trust me, Mrs. Shelley got to go through the women to sell some men because they might listen to their wives, some, but they ain't going to listen straight to her. When I'm free, Mama, I'm going to have my own stuff. I'm going to make my own money, and I'll make it so I ain't the only one. She looked at me with eyes full of pity. Like, I ain't know no better. She started picking with this dry blister on her thumb, feeling where the skin done got thick and hard from pushing needles. Then she started up one of them new coughing spells, and I asked her to tell me what was wrong. She finally said to me she ain't have no answer. <coughs> the doctor come by, and he ain't know what it was, so she ain't know either. Next day, I asked Master John about Mama. See, if he knowed something Mama wasn't telling me, he shook his head and said he didn't know no more than I did. I was about tall as him now, but he was still a much bigger man. I was lean and strong, but he was big and strong. Don't worry too much, Eve. These things tend to pass and people get better. Your mama's strong. She must have been real proud of you last night. Yeah, she was. Couldn't stop talking. He laughed and said, nobody missed you on that fiddle. Master John stopped cutting his piece of wood for a bit and looked me square in the eye. E, you are good. Good enough to play for other people. Now, I know a lot of white folks don't like it, but I think it's all right for a man to earn something of his own. Just like it's important for a family to know each other. Those things are important. You listening to me, E? Yes, sir. Said that. Now after last night, I'm thinking we have some opportunities. Farming and woodwork and Charlotte's lessons, those three things bring in a decent living, but we can actually make some money and not just spend. You following me, E? No, sir. I said being honest. I ain't know the difference. <laughs> we ain't rich yet. You know that. Some folks have lots of land and slaves and don't have to work as hard as we do just to make a living. That's not us. We're simple folks. We work hard for what we have, but we don't have extra. Pretty soon, you won't be able to fit my hand-me-down shoes and my pants. We'll be up past your ankles the way you keep growing. You eat like a man now. You coming along like a man and work like a man. Means you need man stuff. He seemed fine with talking about me becoming a, a man when men was free. I was a slave, and that means I can't be a man. I ain't say nothing but looked at the piece of brown leather on that board I was stretching. I brushed it. Some cow give up its life for that piece of leather to sit on that board so that we can make a chair and somebody can sit on it. That was the way things was. Some people give up their lives for other people's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Master John, I finally said after he started back to work. Yeah, I can't be a man, sir. No matter how big and strong and grown I get or how much I eat or work, I can't be a man. He looked at me then. I ain't looked back. I studied that piece of leather though. There wasn't nothing much more I could have studied. I tightened the pins and make it straight. I smoothed it under my hand. I taped up one of the seats we cut yesterday and started sanding it. He ain't said nothing yet. I wonder if this was the thing to finally make him mad. In all the years, I ain't never seen him get angry because enough to really scare me. But that silence. I didn't want to look up this way. Finally peek out the corner of my eye while I turned the seat to work on another side. He was standing there, his back to me. 
like he was thinking real hard and just wasn't sure what I meant or what to say. I was about done standing in that chair by him when he finally said something. Why do you say that? Master John, you know a slave can't be a man. Men are free. He tensed up like he was about to get mad and he hardly ever got mad. Thanks God he ain't like that. Some of our friends at church, they got masters with temper so bad they'll hurt them for looking at the wrong spot in the sky. Master John required a lot of me, of everybody and himself, but he was fair. When we ain't have enough because the crops wasn't good in the year, they never gave me less than I needed. Everybody got a little less. He said it ain't make no sense to not be fair. I wish he also think it ain't no make no sense to not be right. Because it wasn't right, I couldn't be a man and free. 